Hello, my friend. It's episode 401 of the Keto Diet Podcast. I'm so thrilled that you're here today hanging out with me. So it's December 27th. Maybe you're listening to this episode a little bit later, and maybe you're starting to think about your New Year's resolutions and either totally freaking out or you've just decided it's been five days and you're not doing them. So I wanted to have this conversation and I really do every year. It's always just a little bit different as I learn more about what motivates me, what motivates other people and what information you guys need to better your approach to wellness. So we see common resolutions, including things like exercising more, losing weight, getting organized, learning a new skill, reading a book, like maybe reading a book a week or a book a month. I tried the whole book a week thing and it is so hard to be consistent with that. Saving money, spending less, quitting smoking, spending more time with family. Like these are all great things, but I think we can go so far with the pendulum one way and so far the other way that we lose sight of why we're doing it. And also we can get discouraged by others. So I had a conversation with my friend, Jonathan Shane. He's been on the episode or been in a couple of episodes on the podcast, rather in episode 294 and 312 talking about all sorts of things. If you enjoy our conversation today, definitely head back to episode 294 and 312 to listen in more. Jonathan is my actual best friend in real life. I love the guy. He's amazing. And he had me on his podcast in November or so. And it was just such a great New Year's conversation. We were talking about goals and setting them and how to know when you need to be harder on yourself, how to know when you need to be softer on yourself, how to know when it's time to shift things, what motivates you, how to be motivated. It was just such a great conversation that I wanted to share that same audio with you here in the new year. You guys have never heard this before. It's all brand new. And I just wanted to kind of set the stage before we get in to our conversation with Jonathan really about all this New Year's resolution stuff, like make it your best year yet and be addicted to bettering yourself. And this is the version of, or this version of me rather wasn't built overnight. Like all these, what I can consider a disordered encouragement, you know, if we're If we're hearing like, make it your best year yet, like fair enough, totally, yeah. But do we have control over making it your best year yet? What if somebody in your family gets diagnosed with cancer? Can you still have a happiness and joyful presence about you? Be addicted to bettering yourself. Well, I can see a bunch of different reasons why that's not gonna work long-term. Like what about your family? What about your other priorities? Like if you were addicted to bettering yourself, you're probably gonna be in narcissistic pain, right? Like this version of me wasn't built overnight. Like I get it. You know, it takes time and I can see the encouragement there of, you know, we got to put in a lot of work. I know, you know, August 4th, I decided that I was going to start working out every day and I've been so consistent with this. I don't even know how, like, because the struggle is real every day. I'm like, I don't want to do this. And I do it anyway. And I have to remind myself that like, It's only been four or five, at this point, it's been five months, right? August, it's only been like four months, almost five months. And I have to remember like, this takes time. This takes so much time. So I get telling us ourselves, this version of me wasn't built overnight, but the whole like version of you, like if you can recreate yourself, all of a sudden your life is going to be better. That's always a recipe for disaster. And there's another one that says like, if the, if there is no struggle, there's no progress. Well, I believe that struggle is part of some of these changes that we need to make. You know, most recently in November, I was working like way too much. My priorities were all sideways and I had to like sit myself down and go through everything and be like, okay, I need to restructure things. This is not working. This is not working long-term. And so sometimes we need to do that. We need to see where things aren't working. We need to shift. We need to adjust. We need to drop our ego and there's going to be struggle, but I wouldn't say that like you should expect struggle at every turn and it's just going to be terrible. Another one is every year you make a resolution to change yourself this year, make a resolution to be yourself. Ugh, I just like, I get, so this goes on the other side of things, a pendulum swinging to like, do whatever you want and don't try to improve upon the things you have. Like it's such, it's such a delicate balance. And that's why I wanted to have this conversation shared with you because it was just such a great way of building up how to prepare goals for yourself in a healthy way. So my friend, Jonathan, he's going to start off chatting with me in a bit here. And I'll be sharing that with you in a moment. Jonathan Shane is the owner of Keto Road LLC and certified FNTP specializing in the ketogenic diet 
diet. After overcoming an eight-year battle with bulimia and body image issues, he knows the struggles of finding true health and food freedom. He has now devoted his life and experience to helping people take control of their health. You can find more from Jonathan by going to theketoroad.com or performancegains.com. So it's performance without an A, gains, G-A-I-N-Z.com. Okay, so before we get into this audio that I'm going to be sharing with you, I also want to remind you that December 20th, episode 400, we are, we celebrated a 400th episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. And in there, I'm sharing some pretty epic giveaways that we're doing until December 5th. So if you didn't get to listen to that episode, definitely go back and learn how you can enter to win all the epic prizes. I asked you guys what you wanted. You told me it's crazy. So go ahead and listen over there. Okay, without further ado, let's cut over to this episode with Jonathan Shane. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working as a little thank you for being here today. Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. How are you doing today? Oh, Jonathan, I'm no. very confessed. It's been so long since we've gotten a talk. This is awesome. I know, I know. And I feel like I feel like the subject matter today is something that we're both really passionate about. And so I'm really excited to dive into it with you. Yeah, me too. All right. So for those of you that don't know you, because I know, I mean, who doesn't know who Leanne Vogel is? But for those that don't know you, go give them a quick rundown. Who is Leanne? What's, what's your backstory? How'd you get to where you're at today? All that. Who is Leanne? It's an existential crisis to ask me that question. No, I'm kidding. Um, So yeah, I had an eating disorder at a young age. I was a hot mess involved in drugs and all the things. And a colleague told me I should probably learn about nutrition because I was slowly killing myself. I decided that was probably a good idea. So I went to school for nutrition. And at the time, I just wanted to help myself. But after I graduated, I'm like, oh my gosh, I know so much. I want to help other people. And so I set up Healthful Pursuit, my blog back in 2010, um, to really share the stuff that I found interesting. And at the time I was vegan, I still had an eating disorder at that point. I'd been clean for a while. And so that was really great. And so in 2014, I hadn't had a period in seven years. And that was due to many reasons, including including going off hormonal birth control or the cause of hormonal birth control and then going off and not getting a cycle. And so in 2014, I did a bunch of research, found out the ketogenic diet could help me, and I decided to try keto. And so after 30 days, I knew I would never go back to my vegan ways. I still haven't. No way, no how. And then it took me like a really long time to figure out what worked best for my body, how to educate properly within the ketogenic space. I came out with keto beginning, fat fueled, happy keto body, balanced keto, all these digital programs. And then in 2017, I released my first book, The Keto Diet, and then The Keto Diet Cookbook, and then Keto for Women. And just, yeah, who am I now? I mean, I don't really talk about keto all that much anymore. I've found that Diet is such an integral part, but it's not the only part. And so many of the people that I attract are pretty on point with their diet, but things are still totally messed up. And so I started realizing that there was so much more to it. And so that's really what I educate on now is blood chemistry, microbiome, gut, diet, like all sorts of things, bring in some spiritual wellness in there because it's so important. Our traumas and everything we carry around with us, if you have that stuff and you're not processing it, good luck. It's really important. And so that's mostly my professional life, my personal life. I live on a boat with my dog, Coconut, and my husband, who is now a pilot, which is so strange because it's it happens so quickly. And yeah, that's that's about all. I track my macros every three to four days instead of every day because I personally will get totally nuts over the whole process if I do it daily. The twice a week tracking keeps me on target, helps me learn my natural tendencies, especially when I'm left unsupervised. And then I come back, I track, and it actually encourages me to change habits ongoing. This process has helped me feel out what it's like when I don't eat enough fat in the day. I'm sure you've had this feeling before too. The clock strikes 7.30 
3 p.m. You've had dinner, you're feeling a little bit snacky, you're in the mood for something. And on the days that I'm tracking, this feeling is always, always, always because I didn't eat enough fat in the day. I'm usually like 20 to 30 grams or 180 to 270 calories short of fat in the day without fail every time. So with a little wiggle room on the carbs and protein, but primarily it's a fat issue. So what do you do when you're hungry? Have 200-ish calories to spare, but they can only be mostly fat. Well, if you're hardcore like me, coconut oil probably came to your mind first, but no, that's not what we're gonna be going through today. I wanna talk about macadamia nuts. Instead of grabbing that snack-sized bag of Boom Chicka Pop, been there, or keto Oreos from Costco, also done it. Macadamia nuts are the world's natural fat bomb. They're rich in monounsaturated fat. They have over 60% fiber and has a potent dose of potassium too, the mineral that sensitizes your cells to uptake thyroid hormones so that your metabolism stays revved up. One serving of macadamia nuts is 270 calories and a whopping 27 grams of fat so you can hit your fat macro without having to eat another one of those cream cheese fat bombs you have stuffed in your freezer. And let's talk a sec about monounsaturated fats. They encourage weight loss, reduce pain and stiffness, lower risk of heart disease and stroke, balance out LDL cholesterol and improve blood sugar control. Plus, they taste delicious but it's really hard to find macadamia nuts that don't taste like plasticky. Have you had that? Or often they're just crumbly and dry. And this is why the only brand I trust is House of Macadamias because they source directly from farmers and hand sort their products in the world's leading harvest facility in South Africa. I love, love, love their macadamia snack products from houseofmacadamias.com. Each little packet is loaded with flavor. They have onion, sea salt, zesty salsa, chocolate, white chocolate, white chocolate raspberry dipped, and all of these are dairy-free and free of all the funky ingredients you would expect in keto snacks, because let's face it, most keto snacks are keto garbage. Head to houseofmacadamias.com slash KDP and check out their selection of fat-filled snacks. They have bars too, and if you like what you see, use the code KDP20 for 20% off your first purchase. That's houseofmacadamias.com slash KDP and use the code KDP20 for 20% off. That's all. That's so much. It's so much. There's so many rabbit holes we could go down. No, but I love it. I love it. I love, you know, watching you mature and, and just kind of evolve over time into like who you are today and kind of like, cause I think when I first met you, you were still like, I think you were like talking a lot about keto still, but like kind of dabbling into carb cycling. And then you kind of, you know, and now you're like more, very much more holistic and more uh, root cause focused, which is really the real thing that I want to talk about. But before we go down the rabbit hole, uh, back up just a little bit. So something that the story that you told me once, and I love this story is when you went from vegan to keto and you told me just how like you were telling these people to like go eat meat and you're like eating like pork rind pancakes. And they're like, what's going on? <laughs> and you're like, it's like complete 180. How do you, I, I think that the, I, I love that story, but one of my questions is how do you, for the other women in the room, and, and maybe maybe this is more a professional question, maybe they're dealing with this with the family, you know, dynamic. How do you what advice do you have when they're trying to transition and they do have people respond in such a harsh, negative way to the changes that you're making? Yeah, that's a great question. And I wasn't root cause focused until you came into my life and you were so smart and you were saying all these things I didn't understand. And I was like, I need to learn more. And so you were really the catalyst for me to be like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pull myself together. I gotta learn more. So thank you so much for that. It was like, I don't think I've ever told you that. And you have not, I'm about to cry. Stop. (laughs) Stop. But you were, yeah, like it was a huge, it was a huge thing. So what do you do when you start changing and everyone is reacting Stay focused on your goals. Like it is so challenging for people around you to be comfortable with 
the changes you're making. And I've been so fortunate. My husband is so incredibly supportive. And if I told him tomorrow I wanted to move to Portugal and join a zoo, he'd be like, yeah, when are we going? Like, I want to work at the zoo. That's great. Like, he is so incredibly supportive. And I think that I thank God every day that I have that support. And some people don't. I have many clients that tell me that their husbands tell them on a daily basis, you don't need this. You're still the same. Nothing's changing. There's nothing wrong with you. And it can be really hard to stay focused on our goals. And so that's why I think it's really important to go beyond. I want to lose weight. Cause like, I'll tell you right now, that is probably the goal that gets crushed the most because it's not enough. We really have to like dig deep down and figure out why you're doing something, why it's important to you, what kind of life you'll end up having. If you follow the trajectory right now, you know, like whatever that is, maybe it's that you get so anxious when you leave the house, you can't function around other people. Like those are some key things that we need to look at and assess and build that into our why. And I think when you have that, not only from a personal perspective, but even in my business, when I found keto and I started feeling the way that I felt and having the results, I was like, I don't care how many people I lose because I know I'm on to something. And you can't really say that about your friends well some friends for sure but yeah. family spouse you kind of have to like roll with it and and just stay firm and confident i think the confidence piece is so so important you know like moving forward and not having a lot of noise in your ears we can listen and consume so much content online which is such a blessing but in so many ways it can make us second guess ourselves so really mm -hmm. just mapping out what's important to you why are you doing it and really align yourself with people that will support you you know like you need that community aspect even if that's a therapist you're paying to, to say like this is what's important to me and this is why it's important to me and have somebody on your side that's rooting you on so that you can stay focused, I think is so, so, so important. I can't agree with everything you said more. And I think something that I really appreciate is the one thing you didn't say was eventually they'll catch on. Eventually they'll accept yes. you. And that's not true, right? Like, like that's not always true. Like we, I think sometimes people are, they, they cling to hope. And then when things don't go their way, their environment doesn't really change the way they want it to. Even over time, they start to get discouraged. And I think it's, I love that your advice was simply just like, like stay true to what you're doing, stay focused and don't rely on it whatsoever. Don't rely that your family's ever going to fully accept what you're doing because there's a chance that they won't, right? Like I know for my family, like some of them have definitely accepted. This is just how I eat. This is how I live. But there's, but it's turned from judgment to sarcasm right now. They just say sarcastic comments or whatever. Yeah. It's like slight, right? Like it's never truly been like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to embrace you. Like, so for me to rely on that acceptance at some point would not end well right so it's just like being yeah. strong in my resolve and what i want and what i know i need to do regardless of outside forces i think is i think it's spawn on advice yeah yeah i mean uh, so i made a commitment to myself on august 4th of this year that i was going to start moving my body every day mm. and i come off like massive amounts of adrenal dysfunction to the point where i couldn't do that and so I made this commitment and it's, I think I'm at day like 107 today and which is crazy. It's awesome. But I've had to set really clear boundaries. Like mm -hmm. my parents came to stay with us for two weeks. Our house is literally 60 feet long. So there's not a lot of space. And so when I would work out, which is in my very small space in the hallway, which is the only space, I literally had to tell everyone I'm working out. So if you need to exit the home, you're going out the side doors, not the back door, because I'm in that space and just setting up those clear boundaries of this is what I'm doing and not saying, Oh, well, they're here. You know, I can mm. work out when, when they leave or, you know, I, I could totally have that. You know, my mom was like, let's go for ice cream. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'll take you, but I'm not going to engage in that right now. And just having clear boundaries is so important and not like ebbing and flowing with what everyone else is doing. And that's always been such a challenge for me, especially with movement. I make up so many excuses as to why I can't move today. I can't get on my bike. I can't lift some weights for 15 minutes. And after I do it, I'm like, idiot, come on. Like, this was so easy. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? And so I think the more we do it and the more, the less scary it is of just like, you know, to my husband, okay, I'll be ready in 30 minutes. I need to do a quick workout. And he's like, okay. 
you know, and that's just, that's what I'm doing. So I think the boundaries piece is, is really important. A thousand percent. It, this is like, we can down a whole nother rabbit hole of society now. Cause I think that we live in this society that is very fickle with boundary, right? Or like it's all, there's no like true, like commitment and discipline. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. here's what we're going to do. Unless this 90 other thousand things come up and then we're going to do those things instead. Like, like we're so flaky with boundaries. We're so flaky. I think you're right. I think and I think that's why like a health journey is so holistic. And I know we both love that about health is like, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical, but that's one of those reasons is because when we learn to set really firm boundaries with like our dietary choices or our movement, the ability to build discipline in general, because you're setting those goals and sticking to them bleeds into everything else, discipline, spiritual yeah. discipline, mental health discipline, all this stuff, because it's like, okay, I can set boundaries, right? Cause I think a lot of people are at the point where they convince themselves that like, I don't, I don't, I can't set boundaries. I, I suck at that. And it's like, it's not true. You just need to start and like, you get to choose, right? Like nothing, nothing outside of you dictates whether you follow a boundary, just whether you do or not, right? Not even whether you think yeah. you can or can't, right? Like if you think you can't, you're right, but not because you can't, but because you choose not to, right? It's it's all yeah. choice. It's not perspective. It's not life. It, it is choice. Um, like and I think, they made me do it. And they, yeah. you know, like, no, that was a choice you made. And it stings. It's mm-hmm. hard. But it's it's up to you. Nobody else is going to do it. <laughs> uh, a thousand percent. I couldn't agree more. Um, all right. So I want to get to the root cause thing. But I think before root cause, we should talk about symptom. So you said you went from keto and then I know we just brought up carbs and stuff and things like that. So kind of tell us like, just for someone, just like really quickly, like if they are keto, a female that's keto. And and as we both know, right, there can be some complications that come up, right? If they're not adding in some carbs for cortisol, lowering and balance when it comes to their cycles, you know, as we get into the luteal phase, things like that, menopause, perimenopause, all that jazz. Like what are some signs and symptoms that they can look for that maybe, maybe they need to cycle off. Maybe they need to include these things that they're not used to having. And I think it's important to have the conversation now because we just talked about having discipline and doing what works best for you and sticking to your guns. And I think a lot of females feel very, very uh, stuck because they know they can't go back to a standard American diet, but they also feel that if they do include some carbohydrates or something in their diet to deal with some of these symptoms that they're experiencing, that they're kind of breaking the rules, that they're, they're, they're doing the naughty thing um, and they're not sticking to their guns as an individual. They're trying to follow a pact and they can't see that it's, it's, it's hurting them. Yeah. It's, that's that tension we carry, right. Of just like setting boundaries, making goals, but then understanding when it's really not working for us Mm -hmm. and we need to shift because it's actually making us sick. So uh, here are a couple of symptoms that I've noticed that can be signs that maybe you need to assess what those boundaries are, what those goals are, and specifically as it relates to carbohydrates. So headaches, Mm. fatigue, Mm. not building muscle, that's a big one. If you're going to the gym every day, I've been amazed coming back. Like I have biceps. Like I've never had arms like this because I'm so ready to lift and my hormones are in such a good place. I've never, like, even my husband the other day was like, Whoa, like, I don't know how this is happening. (laughs) That's a good sign that you're like on the right track. But if you're going to the gym every day and it's just muscles not working or the next day you're totally fatigued, that's a good sign that you need to probably adjust your macros. You need to adjust your movement nightmares or like bad dreams can Mm -hmm. also be a sign that there's some some imbalances there. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that a lot. Anxiety, depression, worry, gosh, like uh, snacking. Like if, if you are preparing your dinner and you're already eating, that is such a problem. And mm-hmm. when I ask my clients mm-hmm. this question, it's a huge sign that we're not eating enough and we're not satisfied. And we like, you should be able to wait until dinner. If you're snacking and picking and like, preparing things, but you're also eating at the same time. That's a big, big red flag for me. Digestive issues too, like constipation, diarrhea, funky colors in your stool. Like anything that's not normal is really your, your body trying to communicate to you. And then it just becomes like, how do you decode that? Usually it's diet and environment. And I would say water is separate from diet because everyone doesn't think about water when they talk about diet. The quality of our water is so mm-hmm. key. Yeah. But if you've been eating a strict ketogenic diet and you're a woman, you are supposed to be cycling. Maybe your period is changing, uh, either in severity, maybe you're getting more symptoms or less bleeding, or your period is getting shorter or longer. 
those are signs that, or even your cycle itself is getting shorter or longer. Those are signs that it, there's probably something happening in your ketogenic diet where you need to shif shift your macros. Generally, carbohydrates is usually the one where you got to like tone down the fat a little bit, increase the carbohydrates a little bit. Luckily for women, we have this amazing vital sign which is our period, which tells mm -hmm. us how we're doing. If you're not getting a cycle or your cycle is a hot mess or it's short, long, all those things, it's a big, big, big sign that there's something going on with your macros specifically. I remember when my husband and I bought our first RV, I was really pumped about having a little cubby in the RV dedicated to snacks. I really love snacks and throughout my ketogenic life, I know what they say. You don't even need to snack. You're so free, free from food, but I, I like snacking. I really enjoy snacks. And up until a couple of years ago, my snacks really were comprised of bars, like protein bars and nut butter packets. But when Paleo Valley came out with their meat sticks, game changer. I love, 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 love Paleo Valley meat sticks for so many different reasons, including the fact that they travel well. They're packed with probiotics. They're fermented beef sticks. They're not those chewy jerky like sticks and meat bars that are just gross. Oh, I don't enjoy those very much. They're soft and good and the flavors are on point. Mm, I'm honestly just salivating thinking about it. You can go to paleovalley.com and use the coupon code KETO, all in caps, to receive 15% off your first order. Again, that's paleovalley.com all uppercase keto is the coupon code to receive 15% off your order. Definitely load up on those sticks. They're some of my favorite snacks. Well, one of my favorite snacks. I have two in my purse all the time. I've shared them with friends and family, gotten everyone in love with these things. They're so tasty. Your kids are going to love them. Your husband's going to love them. You're going to love them. They're really, really good. And they have some really great subscription products up there to save a good amount of money on these sticks. So again, that's paleovalley.com coupon code keto. Enjoy. I love that. And I think, I think something to point out here too, is like a, a woman balancing her hormones. And I think too, like, and, and I'm going here just cause I know women, there's some women that don't ever cycle off and, and, you know, and if that works for them, they feel great. That's great. But there are so many women. I think that there's a, the community as a whole is so scared to say that for in some forms, carbs can be good, that they can be beneficial yeah. that they, that they say, Oh, well, no, this just happens. Like, okay. Like when, like when like thyroid levels get super low, I've also, I've, I've heard that, that common, Oh, well, it's just because it's different metabolic pathways. Right. No. So it's fine. And it's like, no, this isn't, we're not talking about a misunderstanding of LDL cholesterol here. We're talking about a lowering of a hormone that directly affects yeah. your body's ability to have cell efficiency and actually burn calories, right? Like the like T3 plays a vital role in the creation of NAD, which is the start of the Krebs cycle. It's like all this metabolic stuff. And it's like, if you don't have it, you don't have it. It doesn't matter. You don't because, have it. You don't have it. <laughs> But it's not talked about like you bring that up and it's like, okay, well, that's what's going on. Or like, or like a woman will have a shorter cycle and it's like, oh, well, you know, your body's finding it's healthy norm. And it's like um, a 25 day cycle is not a healthy norm. I don't care who you are. That is way it, in my, like those are is way too much hot, way too much progesterone at some points. Cause you should, it shouldn't happen that fast. But anyways, but yeah, so like, I love that advice. And I think that, I think that's one of the issues we're falling into is people are so scared to say, Hey, okay, maybe it's not all black and white. Maybe the body, the way it's designed by God is super complex. And there's a lot of things going on, you know, and it's not simple as like, do this, don't do that. It's like, you know, like, it, it's kind of like what I always say is, uh, people will often come up to you and say, all fats are good or all fats are bad. And we know, especially people that are like super into like keto and all that, that's not true. Like, like, like there's seed oils, there's, there's, there's canola oil, there's coconut, like there's, there's different fatty acids that do different things. So for us to yeah. say that about 
fats and then proteins. Oh, all amino acids are the same. No, they're not. All proteins are the same. No, they're not. Right. But then we go, well, all carbs are bad. It's like, how can we not see the discrepancy in this conversation? <laughs> oh yeah. Mic drop. I've never seen it that way. Totally. We see the intricacies of fat and protein. The minute you say carbohydrates, like I, along with moving and making that commitment, I've been really, really focused on boosting up my potassium mm. using real food. And so I'm eating a lot of greens, like a ton of greens. Mm. And I post pictures of me eating greens and people are like, you're going to get so fat eating those carbohydrates. I'm like, what? Like, I don't even understand the logic. I'm literally making a tuna wrap with collards. And you think that the, like, it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And I think we can see that because we've been trained to understand that, but it is so confusing when you haven't spent oodles of hours and years studying bodies and nutrition and all these things to understand that that's garbage. That makes no logical sense. And unfortunately, oh, there's just so much information out there. Like, how are we supposed to make sense of it? And it, it's so overwhelming. But I think you're right. The body is complicated, but also like super super simple. Like mm -hmm. it communicates with us. It tells us what we need. I think we just need to drop the whole ego of like, but I'm keto or, but I'm doing this, that, yeah. or the other thing. And you know, if I, I started noticing over the last week or so that I'm getting a little bit more tired with my workouts in like after about two or three days, I'm like, Kate, let's not keep doing it this way. I need to shift things out because the last thing I want to do is go back to total adrenal burnout. And that's like, Oh, you have to like drop your pride a little bit and be like, okay, like I need to go back to the drawing board. And I think that's so hard for us. Mm -hmm. The pride piece of just admitting when maybe our plan didn't work that well. And we need to like go back and figure it out. I think is a big part to it too. No, absolutely. It, that reminds me of my running. So I pride myself on being a low carb endurance athlete. Like I, I love that. I, I think it's very beneficial. I think there's a lot of pros and a lot of advantages to to using fatty acids and ketones, primarily an endurance base. But I also understand and respect the role that carbohydrates play, even in a low carb athlete. And, but still to this day, like I'll go like two or three days with like 50 total carbs because I feel good. And all of a sudden, like my workout, I start to feel, I just want to nap all the time. I just want to sleep all yeah. day. And I know what the problem is. I know I need more carbs and I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, man, you can fight it. You're fat. You know, and it's like, John, yeah. you're going to hurt yourself. You're an idiot. Eat. And like, so then I go in the kitchen and I like make a bunch of stuff and I like put honey over everything. And 30 minutes later, I feel amazing. And I'm like, like a different human. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just like, I'm such an idiot. And it's not, I shouldn't say that because I'm not an idiot. It's just, there's this level of, of ego and willful ignorance. Because we want to, we want to feel like we're part of something. And when you're not doing a high carb diet and you're not like following like the flexible eating where you eat whatever the hell you want on macros, but you're also like not doing strict keto or carnivore. You're like, this person's like doing that sometimes. And then eating some carbs when you need them, you're just, you're doing what's best for you. But in your head, it's like, I don't fit in anywhere. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like I remember when I first started eating carbohydrates again, it's because, because I often correlate endurance running a lot with with like women's health because there's you know their endurance based cortisol events and I was like injuring myself and super tired all the time and mm -hmm. and so I was like you need to try carbs and I remember it was so hard for me to do it because I had prided myself on like not cheating on keto for three years and doing this yeah. was going to and like looking back now I'm like I was willing it, it's honorable to want to stick to something but when you're willing to hurt yourself to achieve this title you're kind of being dumb <laughs> yeah Totally been there multiple yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> now, even when I eat honey, I think of you every time, like, every time, <laughs> every time I'm like, Jonathan, I am not going to eat honey. And you're like, no, you should try it. Like I am obsessed with honey with obsessed. salt on it. Like that so, is oh. so good. It is yeah. so good. So yeah, I think those little things and it just, as you listen to that, as you set boundaries and you build goals, like we were talking about, and then you realize that, oops, maybe that wasn't right. And you're, you're constantly learning about mm -hmm. yourself. And where does that confidence come from that we were talking about before? Like, I'm confident in doing this. It comes from that practice of just like, no, I know that this doesn't work for me because I tried that and it didn't work. And so you build more and more confidence and you get more and more in touch with your body, what it needs, 
how it works. So you don't go beyond. And I mean, I still, I still screw it up for sure. But you know, I was really proud of myself when I noticed that my, I just wasn't recovering as well. And I was like, okay, I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to increase my carbohydrates because my default is always, and like, I just don't eat. Like I could Mm -hmm. go days without eating. I don't think about it. I don't care about it. And so I really have to be like, okay, Leanne, it's time to sit down and eat something. And so I think understanding that that whole process will bring us to a better confidence in what we're doing so that when those times come, we're like, nope, this is what I'm doing and I'm sticking to it. Absolutely. 1000%. And just to drill one thing, I just, I have to say this and then I want to move on to the oxalates and veggies and gut stuff that you brought oh, up the boy. other day. I want to dive into this, but people are listening and they're going, but I have tried carbs and they don't work for me. I want to make this very clear. And I think this is something that's not talked about enough. And I need to, I want to, I really want it to be emphasized. The way your body deals with whole food carbohydrates post fat adaptation is very different than someone eating a standard American diet and eating Twinkies. When you say, yeah. again, that's, that's you, that's you compartmentalizing carbohydrates as a macronutrient. And you're saying, Oh, I used to eat funnel cake and 20 bananas and banana pudding. And all of a sudden carbs don't work for me. And it's like, no, one, you're not going to be eating those kind of carbs if you do it right. Two, your body's in a very different place metabolically once it's learned, re- relearned how to use fat more efficiently. It's going to handle the carbs different. It's going to prioritize them differently. It's not going to be the same. So I think that if you're like, I have tried that, but you're talking about you've tried carb, a high carb diet before you went keto, I think, I think that's wrong. I think that you need to give it another shot because I think your body's in a very different place physiologically speaking. Yeah, totally. Couldn't agree with you more. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So. Let's dive into the fun stuff. I know this is your jam. I'm ready. All right. So I was on your stories and I saw you were like, if you can't eat greens, it's not the greens is your gut sucks. And I was like, <laughs> I like this woman. Okay. I knew, I knew it. We're great friends. Can you elaborate though? On, Cause like I personally, like my diet is very full of like fruit, like meat, fats. And then like, if I have my carbs come from like siete chips So like basically like tubers and fruit, like I don't eat a lot of like green stuff, which it's not that I don't like it. I I crave salads every now and then, but I don't eat a lot of them. So it's definitely not something I've dived into. I understand the idea of oxalates. I understand that some people are sensitive to them and some aren't, but it seems like you've really come down to more of a root cause of why someone can't deal with them. Yeah. So I have 130 clients and not one of them is on a low oxalate, low FODMAP low lectin diet. Like I I always think one of my mentors and he's really become a friend now uh, says, do we think we're so weak that the plant has one up on us? Like that we can't, like we can't handle eating a plant. Like just, just logically think through that. That makes no sense. And if there's somebody listening, that's carnivore, I really feel for you. I have clients that are on a carnivore diet, generally speaking as an elimination diet until we figure out what's going on in the body. Usually these people I've noticed are dealing with mold. Like the root cause is usually mold and parasites and their gut is just so messed up from constant overload that it can't handle those sorts of foods. And so for those people, when they start eating plants, it hurts and it feels uncomfortable. And they're like, why would I do that? Of course, I'm meant to be carnivore forever. So we need to understand that there are certain dysbiotic patterns in the gut. There are really three main dysbiotic patterns, digestive dysfunction, dysbiosis, inflammatory dysbiosis, and insufficiency dysbiosis. Now, insufficiency dysbiosis is generally where we see issues. <laughs> you literally I'm taking them. notes. I'm like taking <laughs> notes right now. <laughs> That's amazing. So insufficiency dysbiosis is where we see low commensal and keystone bacteria. Okay. So one that you've maybe heard of before, maybe you think it sounds like a different language is acromancia. Acromancia is a keystone bacteria. Keystone meaning super key really important, really helpful for mucosal health. It gets low when we don't eat carbohydrates. So every single keto person, like hardcore keto person that I do a GI map on, which is a stool test, has low acromancia. And so to increase acromancia, which is a commensal and keystone bacteria in the gut that helps just overall balance of mucosal health in the gut, When it's low, you have leaky gut. Like most of the time it's coming with all the other commensals that are low and you have a leaky gut situation. In order to 
build up acromancia, we need to be able to eat plant. We need to eat plants, um, specifically red plants, like red cabbage, red skinned apples, red berries. Okay. Many of the things that we're not necessarily going to eat if we're on like a carnivore or low carb diet, because by the end of the day, you know, our, I know when I was hardcore keto, my carbs consisted of like a little bit of nut butter, maybe, and like some broccoli. <laughs> that was kind of it. And so when we started to eat these plants, our belly starts hurting and we're like, see, see, I shouldn't be eating this plant. It hurt my gut. But there's this uncomfortability that comes with this insufficiency of this. It's like, it usually lasts anywhere between four to eight weeks where as we're eating the plants, we feel uncomfortable until we no longer feel comfortable. Like you should be able to eat chickpeas and kidney beans and collards and um, celery and all sorts of things without it hurting your belly. If it's hurting your belly, there's something going on in your gut. You should be able to handle these things. And I just, I can no longer go along with the whole lectins are going to hurt you and oxalates. You should be avoiding them and all these plants. And look, I'm a carnivore and it's so good for my gut. I just, I haven't seen that clinically. I haven't seen that in stool testing. Most of the people that come to me and work one-on-one -on -one with me now are getting a stool test. And I have yet to see a hardcore ketogenic person have a good gut microbiome. It's usually either inflammatory dysbiosis where the inflammatory bacteria have overgrown so substantially that the gut is just so inflamed and can't handle anything or an insufficiency situation where all the healthy bacteria that's fed with prebiotic fibers and plants have been completely destroyed because we're not feeding them. When the commensals are not fed via our diet, they die. When they die, it allows for those bad guys to come in and literally set up camp. And so I've become so passionate about this because it's just, I see this pattern over and over and over and over again, that, that we are eating this low carb diet, thinking that it's good for us. And I, I totally agree. I, most of my clients are on low carb. I think it's a great option, but are they on an absolutely zero plant protocol? Usually not. Like I said, there is a place for a, like a carnivore style diet where we just like figure out what's going on with things. But oh, with the dysbiosis, I just, I no longer think it's okay to just not eat plants. I think that we should be able to take on the plant like and eat it and be okay. And if you're not, there's something wrong. I really think that's one of the signs like what we talked about. If you can't eat a big salad and you feel bad after and your gut and you're having gas and bloating or constipation or it just hurts a lot, there's something going on. I really hope you're enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. You can snap a pic and tag me at Leanne Vogel or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. I'm absolutely fascinated with this. And also it makes me feel better for having my some of my clients do carb cycling because I feel like I'm indirectly helping with this, even though I do it for yeah. completely different reasons, but still, you know, that's the beauty of having different like specialties. Uh, but so the one, one thing that you said that I really liked was, and, and this is something I've been getting at too. So it's funny that you brought it up this idea that what the doctor said about if plants are trying to hurt us, like, and we can't handle it. Like, what is that? That doesn't even make sense. And I've, all, I've said that, like, cause I told people like, so we talk about how animals that we eat have evolved to defend themselves against us, but yet we have evolved to still take them down. Why would external, if we, if we agree that external, if our body responds to external stressors, the same way it responds to internal stressors, then why can't we say that an external stressor from another animal trying to protect itself, if we've evolved to deal with that, to still get our food, why wouldn't our internal stressors also evolve to deal with those things coming in? Right. So like, even if it is 
like attacking us or those oxalates are causing free radicals or whatever's going on, our body should be adapted to deal with these things in an efficient way, just like it dealt with every other food source that we had. So the idea, again, this is like, again, they do do this. The community does do this. It's that discrepancy of like, let's go into the weeds of fats and proteins, but carbs are just one big bad. Oh, so we love external hormesis stressors like the sauna and lifting weights. But the idea of something else that we need that our bodies evolved to dietarily that's a no-go there's nothing nothing our body shouldn't have to deal with anything that stresses our body out there should be nothing like there, like nothing right like it's bad it's terrible just eat meat but it's like there's such a big discrepancy there from a nutritional perspective from an evolution like, like i know because like i i don't say i don't agree with the evolution narrative but i'm just speaking, i thought you were gonna say evolutionary i was like, no 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 I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm speaking in their in their lingo but like, you know, anthropology, right? They're like, oh, like we've learned or we've adapted to defend ourselves against these things. And it's like, well, yeah, but then why wouldn't we have learned to adapt and defend ourselves against plants that we ingest? And you think our bodies aren't smart enough to create microbiomes to deal with some of these toxins? Like that, that makes no sense. So I'm really starting to get behind what you're saying. I, I agree with that because I think that, again, there's just when we want a narrative to be right, we create these things that when we take a step back and look at them broadly, we're being hypocritical because we're saying okay, this stressor is good, but this stressor is not good. If you're uncomfortable sitting in the sauna, you should do it for eight months and you'll get better. And that's great. Every, nobody disagrees on that. But if you tell someone, hey, like if this upsets your stomach, you should probably eat it for a little bit so your body learns how to defend itself. There's like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, no, you know, ooh. but it's like, I, I'm seeing what you're saying too. And you're right, I'm not saying there's some people out there that like can't handle certain foods. And like, I don't want anybody to like, especially if I'm not, Specialize in that. Go talk to Leanne. But I wouldn't tell anybody to go eat something that's going to make them feel really painful. But I definitely think that there's 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 a conversation to be had here that's not being had. And I love that you're kind of taking it and you're like, listen, this needs to be talked about. <laughs> yeah, I think it really comes down to, and I share this imaging with my clients is like, imagine your body as a bathtub, and right now, usually our you know the plug is in the bathtub the faucet is on full blast and you're just overflowing, right? Mm -hmm. With symptoms, with issues. And so not only do we need to start thinking about how do we open the plug and drain the bathtub, but also how do we turn that water off so that we can get a chance to kind of figure out what's going on. If somebody comes to me and their gut is a mess, using functional blood chemistry, we find out their liver's a mess, their kidneys aren't functioning well. I mean, their plug is plugged, the bathtub is not draining. And so that's that's a really big issue. And so I understand things like saunas where we're opening up that plug and we're getting things moving. I totally get that. And, and that's a great stressor on the body, but we need to be thinking more in more areas than just that of how we drain that tub. And then also how we turn that faucet down. That That's our environment. That, that's our diet. That's all, all of our input, right? Like blue light exposure, which I'm saying is it's going dark and I have this huge blue light in front of my face. And <laughs> You know, like all of those things we need to be mindful of that we don't do 100%. I know I don't. And just our water, like I touched on, if you're drinking tap water or glorified tap water from your fridge, that should be your first priority of figuring out the best water solution that doesn't involve the tap at all, because mm -hmm. that stuff is terrible, terrible. And that's going to affect your gut. That's going to affect your hormones. That's going to affect every single part. Um, and like, nobody's talking about water. And this is like so much more important than your macros. I mean, your water makes up every part of your body mm. and you're drinking so much of it on a daily basis. So I think when you start to kind of look at the fact that if we can build up the vitality, we should be able to handle more things. Like we mm -hmm. should be able to handle more stress. We should be able to handle hard workouts. We should be able to handle like, you know, food, like carbohydrates. Like it shouldn't be, ah, an almond. Ah, it's going to hurt me. You know, like this whole thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm so tired of it. Like, it's just, it's too much. It's just too yeah. much. And even, you know, we know that sugar is terrible for us, right? But like, I should be able to have like a little cake on my birthday and not feel terrible, you know? And mm -hmm. I think, I think that's like the balance piece of first understanding what's at the root cause of our issues. There's so many different root causes. And then how do I coach my body up to vitality? And I got to say, avoiding an almond because you're terrified of it. 
I don't think is vitality. I don't think it is like, I want to be able to eat as much as I possibly can and not have to be fearful that my body's going to react in a certain way. And I just haven't seen it clinically with the amount of blood work and stool tests and hair tests that I do on a daily basis where the ketogenic diet on its own. And that's really, I had like a moment where I was like, okay, what I've been teaching about keto, there's a huge piece missing. And that's like everything else we've been talking about of Mm -hmm. just there's more to this and mm-hmm. we need to understand that we want to coach up that vitality. We want to drain that bathtub. We want to turn off the faucet, give our body times to drain. So when we have those onslaughts of, you know, flying in a plane, a lot of people get sick on planes because of the EMF exposure. We should be able to handle a good amount of that toxins in the air. You know, we should be able to handle a good amount of that mold in a house. We should be able to handle a good amount of that, but right now we can't. And I think that needs to be further explored. And I mean, it takes time, but it's pretty fun. No, I love it. I love that this is your passion. And I hope people that are listening that are like, oh my gosh, is making sense. Go and work with you. Also, before we close, I want to add for all you biblical people out there, we technically ate plants long before we started eating meat. Although meat is an essential part of a human diet after the fall, which we can get into in another podcast. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, plants. We've eaten plants for. We are designed by God to handle the plants that we grow because we initially started growing plants for food. I just wanted to add that in there. <laughs> yeah, so good. Preach, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So I love this. Where can they go to find you if they want to work with you or read all your stuffs? Yeah. So probably the best place is Instagram at Leanne Vogel. I also have a website, healthfulpursuit.com. Those are kind of the two ways. And then also my podcast, the keto diet podcast, we still talk about keto for sure, but in the context of everything we've been talking about. Mm So I really set the groundwork of assuming you're eating a ketogenic diet, what else can we be thinking of? Which is a lot of what we discussed here of just going deeper into these avenues that we really need to, in order to have a better handle on our health. So that's the keto diet podcast. Love it. Well, Leanne, sis, I always enjoy talking with you and thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I hope you really enjoyed our time together with Jonathan. Again, you can find him by going to theketoroad.com. Okay. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. So